Lesson 7 of Chapter 1 teaches us how to represent functions as rules and tables. So in this lesson we're going to be identifying functions, we're going to make tables and write rules, and then we'll have a real-world application. Uh, first, what is a function? A function consists of a set called a domain containing numbers called inputs, so domain are the inputs, and then there's a range containing numbers called the outputs. So there's an input followed by an output, and there's a relationship there. So as we move on, that will become a little more clear. Um, we're going to identify functions here. So the func to, in order to be a function, it has to follow this rule. So to be a function, each input can only have one output. However, outputs can have more than one input. So you need to follow this first rule here. Each input can only have one output. So for this example, it says tell whether the pairing is a function. If so, state its do domain and range. Here we have the input of zero with two outputs. If you look at the rule again, each input can only have one output. So you would say this is not a function, even though the 5 only has one, the 10 only has one. It broke the rule with the 0. So we're going to say not a function. This one we have input of 3, output of 1, input of 6, output of 2, input of 9, output of 2, input of 12, output of 1. All these different inputs have only one output, so it is following that rule. And remember that rule about outputs having more input? Uh, one has three and one also has 12, but that's okay. Remember, that's what this says. It can have more than one input. Um, so we need to find a domain. The domain is, are the inputs, the range are the outputs, and that's as simple as that. So we say that this is a function, and then domain would be three, six, nine, and 12. And then the range would be one, two, two, and one. So that's all you have to do for domain and range once you say that this is a function. Here we have this problem. We need to make tables now and write function rules. The domain for the function y equals 2x, is that's the rule of the function, is 0, 2, 5, 7, and 8. So that's the input here. So 0, 2, 5, 7, and 8. And now we need to figure out what the outputs are based on this rule here. The input is x, the output is y, so the output y is 2 times x. So all we have to do to get the output now is to multiply each one times 2, because that's what's happening to x here. So 0 times 2 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, 5 times 2 is 10, 7 times 2 is 14, and 8 times 2 is 16. So that's all we have to do for this one. Make that table using that input and output rule function here. Now we have to actually figure out what the rule is. So it gives us the input and output, and now it's our job to say, okay, what is it? Is it 2 times x? Is it x minus something or plus something? Or is it a combination of those? So what we need to do is look at this chart here. We have an input of 0, output of 2, input of 1, output of 3, input of 4, output of 6, input of 8, output of 10, input of 10, output of 12. We need to find a relationship, and I think I found it. Each one of these is 2 more than the input. So we would say y equals, all right, what is it? x plus 2. That would be the rule function for this table. Let's do a real world application then. You are buying concert tickets that cost $15 each. You can buy up to six tickets. Write the amount in dollars you spend as a function of the number of tickets you buy. So the input would be the number of tickets, and that would be our independent variable because we can always determine how many tickets we want to have. So three, four, you could buy five tickets, or you could buy six tickets. All right, these tickets cost $15 each, so it would be y, the output, the price, would be 15 times x the number of input tickets. So if you bought one ticket, it would be 1 times 15, that would be $15. If you bought two tickets, it would be 15 times 2, that would be 30. Three tickets would be 15 times 3, that would be 45. And I think you're getting the pattern. 15 times 4 is 60. 15 times 5 is 75. And 15 times 6 is 90. So that's how we put this table together based on this real world application. So you actually can go to any amount of, any of these amount of tickets and figure out how much you would pay based on our table here.